Hi, everybody. I'm Greg with Shadow Hunters Paranormal Investigations and Events on the Shadow Hour. And tonight's guest, we have Paranormal Kicks Cancer, LLC, Chattanooga Paranormal Greg, Research Ghost Investigations. Please stand by. You what? You frozen? I think they froze. Yeah, they froze. Okay. Did you want to reintroduce them and I'll try to get them back? Get them back and then we'll we'll just go with it. It's Paranormal Kicks Cancer LLC is the one, right? Yes. Okay. Hold on here. They're here, but they're not, uh, they're frozen. Hold on. got to be the building. It's got to be the building. And they're you're live. They're gone and they'll be back. So I don't know if you want to talk about anything else for a second. Okay. Well, I'll just go ahead and shoot that. Hey, everybody. I'm Greg from Shadow Hunters Paranormal and Events. And I'm with the Shadow Hour on Friday nights at 8 o'clock. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be changing around in about two or three weeks so that we all have the same starting time across the board for the week. And it's all gonna be at seven o'clock. So if your favorite show is Sharon's show or Scotty's show or the new show, which is gonna be Devin Evans, she's gonna be, she's our new representative for shadow hunters from the state of Ohio. She's a psychic medium. She's a great lady. And she's going to have a show on Thursday nights. So we don't have all the details as far as what she's going to run. But she'll be up and running shortly, too, as soon as we make that change. And tomorrow night, we'll be at the woods. Uh, looks like Nicholas, myself, and Sharon at midnight. Nicholas is going, our Nick is going live. So that's going to be interesting. And uh, shout out to Joe Diamond and his show out at the Dole Mansion in Crystal Lake. Uh, great guy. And he does great work. And if you haven't seen Joe, go see him. He's well worth it. Well, tonight we have and we're still waiting on them. There's been, been a little issue, but we have tonight Ronnie D from Old South Pittsburgh Hospital. Hello. She's trying to get you up and running. She's gonna send you another link. Go ahead and, oh. okay, bye. Now you get to see some, some uh, how could you say? In the process, technical difficulties, which of course always occurs when we're dealing with Old South Pittsburgh Hospital, but we have we have Ron D's coming on, and you have Paranormal Kicks Cancer LLC and Chattanooga Paranormal Research Ghost Organization, all out, and they're out of Chattanooga. So, with that. I'll just add one or two more things until I see him up and running. Uh, we also found out the other day from Patrick, another member of the group, that we're uh, going to be in the Walgreens magazine, the, the, the big magazine that goes across the country. So. He did a he did a spread on him as being a uh, paranormal investigator, and now it looks out it looks like uh, we are all going to be in there from Shadow Hunters. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, this again is something that happens every once in a while, so it's hard to believe, but we're going to try to handle it a little differently. So. What you guys got to, you guys hang with me and we'll get them up and running in no time. And 
we'll get everything going. So they're gonna try connecting them now. And we've got all our local information out of the way, I believe. You've got uh, Psychics Unite on Mondays. You've got Sharon's Oracle card readings on Tuesday. You've got Scotty work on Wednesday. Thursday is going to be going to be Devin Evans's show out of Ohio, and Friday's the Shadow Hour. And now that we got everything out of the way, it's got to be the hospital, my friend. Hi, Greg. How are you, buddy? Hi. Once again, here we go. This is Old South Pittsburgh Hospital. There you go. This is Ronnie D's in the middle. And you've got Paranormal Kicks Cancer LLC. And you've got Chattanooga Paranormal Research Ghost Organization. And they're here tonight to go ahead and join us on going ahead and let, giving us a little insight into what's going on there at Old South and maybe come up with a few stories to go ahead and uh, make our hair stand up a little bit on this great <laughs> night. So I still have some hair, but I'm not gonna show it right now. Mine's thinning. Yours is thinning. Guy, well, this guy, they both oh, have hats on, man. so they're cheating. <laughs> Jeez. Hey, Greg, but, great, to have, great to be back on the show. I've got like really special guests with me tonight. I got PKC, which is Paranormal Kids Cancer. Uh, they'll actually be here tomorrow to do our Halloween uh, fiesta festivities um and uh we're donating a lot of money to paranormal kicks cancer tomorrow and we have a really cool local group right next to me this is mark and his buddy todd todd and they're from Hi. oh my god Hi guys from they're from chattanooga they're one of the local groups who have been here a long long time so i'm really proud and really happy to introduce both of these guys and uh it's gonna be a great evening have you guys been running around in there tonight already or what have you been doing Yes, sir. The rest, the rest of my team is uh, out and about right now. Um, Todd and I just got finished up in the psych ward and had some really interesting flashlight experiences uh, around Nellie's room. Oh, wow. Uh, ladies were in the OR up there and just had, had some words come back over the ovulus that they downloaded, um, taught, saying the words burnt and heart attack, which coincides with 30 minutes prior, Todd and I were in the OR room, and he was talking about having heartburn. And even mentioned, well, you know, I don't know if I'm having a heart attack or what. Could could somebody come and help me? And so that was that was pretty interesting. Oh, well, that's awesome. What's really cool about this group is they're a, they're a local group, and they've been investigating the building for about 15 years now. So they've been here through three different like kind of management, uh, you know, three different management organizations, and uh, they think we're the best. It is much better now. Oh, I I know I know I was there. It is very much. Better. I was there and it was like unbelievable. And the, the job that's been done has just been, it's like a whole transformation. I mean, it's, it's no way to put it. How could you get all of that out of there that was in there? You know, that was just, you gotta, you had to have a whole. 35 whole, to 40 volunteers, Greg. Yeah. It's like a cup. The day blood, sweat and tears and 90 tons of garbage. Yeah, that's like a whole army company that was there. Oh yeah. To say the least. And you got a lot of wonderful women too there. We do. Which makes it even, this makes oh, it even meaner. Oh, be careful. Yeah. Their, their husbands might be listening, Greg. Well, that's okay. <laughs> I'm not, I'm on this side of the screen. <laughs> Fair enough. So, but I like, to, I like to introduce the, the gentleman to my right, because like I said, he's been here for, well, the last 15 years, him and his team, and uh, he and I spoke in the parking lot for about an hour this afternoon, and they have some really, really neat evidence that they'd like to share and talk about. That's awesome. I can really turn it over to these two, and sure. uh, let them really talk about their experiences that they had in the building. That's awesome. Great, Great. guys. Thank you, sir. And if you have any questions, don't let me know. Probably oh, I will. The uh, most unique experiences that Todd and I had together was uh, two years ago, we were in the basement area, and this was something I, I was telling him about earlier, in the basement area, and I was messing around with some of the bolts and nuts and screws down there, and, and we were just, you know, asking questions very casually, and this bolt, which was probably around this size, came flying across the room, landed about three feet from my head, and right as it hit the wall, Todd hit his flashlight 
and caught it coming off the wall and hitting the floor and, and tumbling across. Now, we were not provoking. We were not antagonizing. We, we don't approach investigations that way. Our theory is the more respectful you are to these energies, the more likely they are to interact with you. You know, no more than if I came into your home and was, you know, a cheese head uh, to clean it up for, for <laughs> you know, the audience. Um, yeah. <laughs> he just called us Northerners cheese heads. <laughs> Greg. I, I can't use the Southern. I'm, I'm, I'm still on this side of the border, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's on the other side. That's like seven <laughs> minutes away, but. Yeah, well, our, yeah, our approach I is. I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Treat everyone with respect, you know, and, and these energies with respect, and they're more likely to engage and interact, and that's our approach. And, and we've had some other team members stop by and tell us some of the experiences they've already had. We'll be here till four or five o'clock in the morning tonight, um, investigating, and uh, we'll, we will be posting and sending him our evidence. So uh, check back with us in a couple of weeks, and, and hopefully we can have uh, more evidence documented tonight for you. Are you going to post it on Old South site too? Yes, sir. We'll, we'll post it, send it to him and post it. It will also be on our Facebook page, which is okay. Chattanooga's Paranormal Research Ghost Investigations. Um, Kelly, will, Kelly will all write that down and have it, and then she'll post all your links up there so that everybody can go ahead and see what's going on. Yes, sir. And uh, if, if you don't mind, I turn it over to Todd, and, and he okay. can talk about uh, experiences that, that, that we've had together as well. Sure. Hi, right, Todd. We, we, we've had quite a bit. This is this is one of the best places I like to come. And we've been waiting for a month for Rexy to come. And I didn't place. pay him to say that, everybody, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> now, they might get a free night, but I didn't pay him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but Pizza. I, I, can you, I can tell you that I was in the, uh, the downstairs where the cafeteria used to be. And standing there with one person and all of a sudden I hear a noise and I look over and there's a it's, it's one of the rubber balls that when only if you bounce it it flashes okay right it bounced right to me and rolled by me well it came out of the maintenance room where we just came from well we didn't see that ball in there the whole time <laughs> we were in the maintenance room so I'm like where'd this ball come from so I take it, I pick it up, and I roll it back in the maintenance room. Not even five minutes, not even five minutes later, it come rolling back to me out of the darkness and hit me right in the foot. So now can I explain that? Absolutely not. But prior to that, I was trying to I was talking to Timothy upstairs, he was a little kid that was died from apoplectic shock from the copperheads. And I asked him, hey, if you want to go with me, you can come downstairs with me and we'll we'll go downstairs. So it's almost like he was trying to play with me, I guess. But that's the only interaction I had with him that night. But the ball, I had no idea where that ball came from. We never saw it prior to that period. Well, I can honestly say that your location there has always been hopping for me. And... I, you know, there's things that have happened. Uh, the only way I could put it is if I go to get out of a vehicle the first time I get to Old South Pittsburgh and I don't have a camera running in my hands, I'm a numb nut. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. You know, because the thing, one thing, we weren't even, we just showed up and we were waiting to get in. And I sort of got out of the car because we've been in it for like 10 hours and got out and started walking. We're at the back entrance and over there where that, I think it was the emergency room, right? Where the little sidewalk goes back mm -hmm. and the double doors. And I was walking over there and I'm and one of the other people were right behind me, maybe about 10 feet back. I got about eight feet from the doors and they just started going and violent, I mean, that the noise that was created, you could see the glass doing this, and there was, an, there was nobody there. And we went ahead and I made a video afterwards, obviously, because nobody was ready for this, but it went for a good, probably a seven count. 
it wasn't just one, two, it was like seven. And I mean, they were, so the guy that was behind me is much bigger than me. And I had him try to redo it to see if he could make the same amount of noise. He didn't come close. Well, let, let them tell you about the stories that they talked about with sure. climbing on the second floor, yes, which is which is really, really cool. They, we were, uh, I was outside of Nellie's room, which is at the end of the psychiatric ward right. on the left. And uh, had, I was up there by myself. Which we should never do as paranormal investigators. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, where's the safety? Right. Well, that, the, the rest of the team was actually down towards the OR because we were, you know. Great recovery. They, they were close. <laughs> they were close. They had the walkie. But um, I was literally walking out the door and the door was shut originally. And uh, so I shut the door as I walked out and then the door opened and slammed shut. I turned around and looked, opened and slammed shut again. I kind of leaned back and looked again, opened and slammed shut one more time, three times. So I, I picked up the radio and, and you know told the team and, and they walked back down, um, you know, trying to, to get it to do it again and it did not do it again. Uh, what was interesting was I was in there and getting really good uh, K2 meter hits in Nellie's room. And I told her I was going to have to leave and go, you know, meet the rest of the team. And I said, bye. I said, I'm going to shut your door. And I don't know if she didn't want me to leave or right. she wanted me to leave. But th it was some kind of a reaction to oh. what was going on in there. That's for sure. That's awesome. That is really something, man, to see three. Did you capture any of it? We actually, we had a camera set up and of course, the door frame was about a half an inch out of camera view. <laughs> Always, never fails. Always. Never fails. It yeah. did catch my reaction, but you know, we didn't really post or anything because we didn't actually document the evidence. So it's just an experience and a story, which is kind of our approach. If there's no documentation, well, it's a great story. You know, we need to have proof before we post it or or share it so that it is documented evidence. But it was a cool experience. Um, the sounds were there. My reaction was there. Um, we just didn't catch the actual door itself. On Nellie's room, do you experience a lot of a lot of differences in temperature? Yes. Yes, a lot of uh, temperature jumps. Um, we've asked in the past, um, having a you know a meter, a temperature gauge, um, drop to specific numbers. And it's hit those numbers. AJ, our, our other co-founder, he and I were the ones that started this team 20 plus years ago. Uh, he, had, he was asking, can you take it, the temperature down to 27? You know, and this was in the spring here in Chattanooga. Um, it would hit 27. Can you take it up to 42? It would rise up to 42. So he did it on all ends of the spectrum. And for two or three minutes, it was hitting every number right on cue. Holy cow. It was a really unique experience. Now, I guess on that particular night, the other thing we did was uh, they put me in a straight jacket. Um, now this was for an experiment, not my normal life on the weekends. Oh, but, you know, sure, uh, that, that's what he's saying. As guys. far as you know, as far as you know. But they made it, him feel like home. It, oh, yeah. <laughs> it felt very comfortable. So they uh, put me in one of the rooms and shut the door and AJ went outside the room, you know. So I wasn't by myself. There's the rules. But uh, as I was sitting in there, was uh, you know, reenacting a patient experience and uh, started hearing a conversation. And the only way I can describe the conversation, which I'm sure in your experiences, you've heard this, I'm sure you guys have heard this. It literally sounded like, and I hope you can hear this, it kind of goes, gosh, 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 gosh. and then there was another voice that would come back like, you know, you couldn't understand it, but it was two different tones interacting. Right. Right. It was a, we did get that recorded and documented. and uh, We've done AJ, that here too numerous times. And, and, and with, with that, I'm going to shut up and let him tell you about some of his experiences, but that was very unique. We had it documented, recorded, and AJ, who was right outside the room, also heard the talking. Wow. Because at one point he asked me, are you talking to someone? <laughs> I said, no, I'm, I'm in here by myself, but but please talk 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 about your experience. Yeah, yeah we... Uh, was it probably three months ago when we were here? Mm -hmm. um, you got the paranormal balls, you know, that light up that are like cat balls. 
Well, we were down, um, what's that hallway? Shadow hallway. The, the shadow hallway <laughs> on the first floor. Okay. Um, I had my, my camera rig facing down the hallway and Alex behind me here, she was recording it. Um, we heard some stuff down below or down the hall. So we were leaving, there was a group down there and I asked everyone to come back so we can try to entice the spirits and let them try to communicate instead of let, making them run away. So I walked down the hall trying to talk. And as soon as I walked down the hall, we already had one of those uh, paranormal balls sitting on the ground. And we turned it on when we sat it down so you could see it light up if it rolls. Well, I went down, I started talking and all of a sudden we hear this weird noise and we're like, what the heck is it? And then later on, we reviewed the footage. The ball turned itself off somehow and it rolled in front of me into the doorway. And we got it all on film. I didn't kick it. It was nowhere near. It was nowhere near us. The ball, when I got there, you could see the ball was at least five foot from me. But when I got there, we were asking the questions and all of a sudden the ball just rolled, but didn't light up. So that's why we didn't know what it was. And then we realized the ball rolled, but it turned itself off too. Wow. And you could hear it on camera. You can hear it rolling. And that's something we have to get on, on a, a flash drive or something. So Ronnie could have that too. You know, you figure if they could go ahead and they could turn off cameras and everything else, what's a ball to them? Exactly. Yeah. And then, and then probably a half hour later, the, we sat a ball down. It didn't roll, but it turned itself off. So it kind of validated that it can do that. <laughs> and it was in a total another part of the, of the, of the hospital. So. Now, I have a question for you because this happens to us, of, of course, anyone out there who, who has investigated, especially with experience, power drainage, battery drainage, and things like that. This place is notorious yeah. for draining batteries, mm -hmm. um, take, taking away your energy. As a matter of fact, had my cell phone in my pocket just on vibrate, you know, with grandkids and stuff in case there's an emergency. Um, it was like at 80%, Todd and I finished a 15 minute EVP session. When we walked out, put out my phone to make sure there was nothing going on before I turned it off, and uh, I had low battery mode. You know, mm -hmm. it 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 there's, it should not do that. I wasn't even using my phone; it was you know locked. Um, went went from you know that high to uh, below twenty percent in a matter of fifteen minutes. Well, my phone did that today, actually. It was fully charged. We did a couple things. And we got to the hospital and then I went to look at it. I didn't touch it, didn't yeah. use it all yeah. day. And my phone lasts usually two days yep. without charging. Mm -hmm. And I looked at it, it's red, it's under 15%. That's when we walked out. It's in the car right now charging, actually, because it's <laughs> you know, it I think that right there is a prime example of why the professional teams, the ones who are not the thrill seekers, but the ones who are in it to document the evidence and truly Move research and forward. study. Yep. Exactly should share information and work together. When I met him yep. tonight and here we are sharing experiences casually, literally. What are you doing in my hospital? No. <laughs> <laughs> it was Todd's fault. <laughs> <laughs> but you hear that so much. This yeah. is my location. Yeah. Come on, it's everybody's it's, location. It, it, like you said, to move the field yeah. forward, I had no idea about his experience. He had no yeah. idea about my experience. My experience. And, and so, Looking and now forward. it's validation between the teams exactly. of what's yeah, going on. Yeah. Exactly. You know, that paranormal, paranormal unity yes. kind of thing is come and gone up here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, what, and you know, it was being the building owner as well is, is this something that happens to us on a regular occasion? Because we're here, you know, 10, 15 hours a day cleaning and fixing. And, and for groups like this to come in and to validate what's happening to us on a regular occasion, even if it, it, it really enhances what we're, we're experiencing. Because remember, we're in the building 10, 12 hours a day. I mean, we're cleaning, we're fixing roof leaks, and we kind of take it for granted for, for a lot of periods of time because it's kind of second nature to us. But when we sit down and we talk, like these two guys are amazing. We spent hours in the parking lot before. I didn't know them until tonight. I've known, obviously, Chris from mm -hmm. PKC for years. But this group is awesome. And to sit in the parking lot and to talk and to share some of the information that they're getting just backs up what I know about the building already. And it really, really makes me feel great about the things that are going on in the building. Because like I said, it really validates what my team and myself 
you know, interact with on a daily basis. And, and a lot of the stuff that we're getting on a daily basis is what these guys are getting when they come to do an investigation. I love sitting down talking with people like this because they're great groups. I mean, we're going to be really close friends, I hope, after this. Um, because of the information that we I'll shared in the parking it. lot. Chris will think about <laughs> for, it. For well, a small a, no fee. check for you. For a small <laughs> fee. No, yes. I, I'm your best friend. No. But, but it, it's, Are they going to be 20s or? Yeah. Yes, please. I broke. guess I'm going to have to pay him now. <laughs> they kind of broke. But it, like I said, I didn't know these guys until, what, four hours ago? Mm -hmm. right. And it was really neat to sit in the parking lot and to talk about some of the experiences that we've all had in the same location. We all back up each other's stories. Yeah. And these are stories from them 15 years yes. ago. Me and it's six, going on today. Six or seven years ago. And I've been, you know, I've they've been, been coming longer than me. And I've been coming to the building for about nine years. I've owned it for three. And it's like I said, the more people I meet who have the same kind of experiences that I have, it's just, it's awesome because it just validates the insanity, so to speak, because, you know, a lot of people think we're nuts, but when we get a group of people like this, who are just absolutely great people, and they talk about the same things or have the same experiences, it really makes me feel like, wow, there really is something going on here. Well, and the, oh, pa yeah. the passion for this field that I know they have, yes, just from talking yeah. to them for as long these as we guys know are them awesome. today, yeah. And these then guys what are awesome. we have, and then Ronnie, obviously, for what he's done to this building, we got to give him kudos, and and I thank oh, yeah. you what you've done. Um, but I do just, have not to, just because you're my friend, you're giving me a check. I do have but. to stop. Oh, I do have to stop, Chris, because this is not a me thing. No, it's a team. It's a team effort. The I've got team. 35 volunteers who work their fingers to the bones, who are just amazing people, and this building wouldn't be where it is today if it wasn't for everybody who you know, takes family time away from themselves and in personal time. And it's a team. It's not a me thing. It's an us thing. And uh, like I said, it wouldn't be the way it is today if I didn't have some pretty, pretty broad shoulders to, to lean on. So, but like I said, meeting people like this is what makes this incredible for me is to being able to save a historic location and being able to share it with everybody, whether you're from Chattanooga or from Canada. It's just amazing. Well, you know how I feel about the place. Oh, I know. I know. We've talked long and hard about your and, and if I had any way, shape, or form to get down there, like what we've talked about numerous times, I'd be there in a heartbeat. You know, I have so many commitments. But, you know, you guys, if you guys keep it together like that, and nobody has to deal with that fat head syndrome. Everybody will be fine, you know. There and you've got so many. You have some great locations down there. Besides, absolutely. But you know, to share the wealth, absolutely. Because that's when the whole thing takes off, where all the information is spread about people that do the same thing and love to do it. Right, and one of the things that's really neat is. Uh, there is a there's a location that's up in Gallatin, Tennessee. Uh, it's actually called the Rosemont. It's a historic house. Mm -hmm. uh, we're trying to put together, you know, weekend packages. Because I know, Greg, you're from Chicago, as I am. To drive nine hours to go to one location, you know, sometimes can be a little taxing. So we're trying to work with Rosemont, too, so that we can do, you know, a weekend deal where you can, you know, go to Rosemont on Friday night, come here Saturday night, um, so that you can kind of double up your investigation. Rosemont is a great location. Uh, awesome. PK, really, PKC really. PKC will be there. PKC will be there next year. Yep, they'll be there. And we were there in 2019 for PKC. Yeah. It's a, every September. And we're we're about you know Old South Pittsburgh Hospital. We're about we're about paranormal unity. We're about making sure groups like this can get in when they want to. And you you know I, I'm always one of those people that we look at some kind you know we look at evidence that everybody shares and sometimes it's a, a little questionable. But you know what? We believe that if you believe you had an experience, who am I to say that you didn't have an experience? And that's what I think it's all about because everybody takes their experiences, you know, very differently, you, you know? And, and I think Old South Pittsburgh is one of the cool hospitals, was one of the cool paranormal locations that, you know, we had a day tour today that one of the ladies that was here was absolutely skeptic. She walked in the door with an attitude this afternoon. I don't believe in spirits. I don't believe this place is haunted, but my husband dragged me here. I had to like walk her to her car 
<laughs> and she laughed. She was like, wow. And I said, that's why groups like this and organizations like this are here on a regular occasion right. because this building is documented haunted. And like I said, when you got a group from Chattanooga that's here every couple of months, you know there's something going on. We actually brought a skeptic. Uh, this was probably seven, eight years ago with us. Well, as he was saying, very, you know, no way. That's just total BS, you know, and this and that. We said, well, just come with us and experience it. He lasted three hours. <laughs> and and when, when we were uh, at the nurse's station on the second floor, of course, no power in that area. And it sounded like the elevator was working and it deemed and you could hear the elevator moving. And there were four or five of us. We all just kind of stopped and looked at each other and, and you know, just kind of went, you know, listening, you know, make sure we were documenting it. And I can't say the exact words that he said, but it was, <laughs> oh, blank, no, I'm done with this. I'm out of here. Very similar. We escorted him to the door and he said, y'all are crazy. <laughs> and, and he left and, uh, you know, I've, I've actually talked to him a couple of times since and he said, are you still doing that crazy stuff? Yes, sir, we are. But he said, oh, I'll never, I said, I tell everybody I know about that. Did you, did you ask him how long he had to be in the home? <laughs> <laughs> Is that where that straight jacket came That's from? That's where you got the straight jacket, exactly. Yeah, but it was, uh, it, it was really neat. And, and as he was saying, um, I think the, the leaders of teams, as he is, as I am, as Todd, um, you're only as good as your team. And, and I feel we have a fantastic team. Um, Amanda and Marty, who are husband and wife pair on the team, are just phenomenal. AJ, our co-founder, amazing investigator himself. Plus, he can speak a couple he of different languages. Oh, really? Uh, yes. Hispanic, different uh, linguists. Yeah. Linguist, I guess you could say, yeah. in the Spanish um, arena. Um, we have Jason, our tech manager, who is fantastic. And, and then, of course, Todd, who, who do okay in a rush. Last but not and, least. Um, I'm just, uh, oh you know, I just carry the equipment. <laughs> he just almost forgot <laughs> you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. They've been friends the longest, by yes, the way. Have, since, yes. since elementary school. Oh, he's your case carrier. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the oh. case carrier. But as, as you can see, you know, I still got my voice recorder going from the time we were up there. Um, I've seen some of the team come by and peek and say, what are those idiots doing? And now they're back, you know, investigating other areas. So if I see any, any of them again, I'll holler at them and ask them if they've had any experiences, kind of a live. Right. right. We'll talk to them. But I'll, that I'll would be great. That's for sure. Yeah, do, do you mind checking and seeing if anyone is? Look at that. We're going to get just some live updates. How cool is that? That's really neat. That's just, uh, you know, you know, out of all the places, you know, and they have an opportunity like this to be that close, you know, that's just absolutely awesome. Well, I think it speak, speaks volume for, for Ronnie and, and his team as well. When we just met, like he said, four hours ago and uh, felt like we've been friends for years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's a good guy. I mean, in, in, in the paranormal world, you, you meet a lot of unique, different kind of people. And you do. It takes a lot of different people. I mean, for heaven's sakes, we're in the dark chasing spirits. <laughs> you know, Not it, the ones in a bottle either. Yeah. Just saying. That comes after the investigation. Yeah. You, you know, some of the people you kind of look at like, hmm. And then some people you just have a really good connection with. Yeah. And it was really neat meeting this team. And I'm looking forward to, you know, doing some research with them in the future and and yeah, sitting down and really getting over some of their evidence, but uh, and, and for them to be a local team is even is even better, because um, when they're local, they, they spend a lot of time here, and, and that's really important to me uh, is to keep the locals around because they're the ones who you know drive the right the building. And Jason's it looks like in the pharmacy. The cat voice went off multiple times or multiple voices. Uh, I, I don't know if you heard our tech manager and one others in the pharmacy. They had the little cat toys, as he was saying, that have lit up multiple times and multiple voices. Um, so of course he, he's not gonna leave that activity to come here, but so he's got that going on as right. well. And, and speaking of what Ronnie said, you know, met this guy at the same time I met Ronnie and you know, it's very neat. Uh, we switched information 
to uh, collaborate with each other. And I'm very, looking very forward to, to developing that paranormal relationship with him and his team. And maybe in the future collaborating, going, you know, so, somewhere big, maybe meeting here. Um, and, uh, you know, just, just continuing to build, as you said, that paranormal unity through the, uh, to, to say this correctly, through the professional teams, I've used that term a couple of times on purpose, because it, for those who have never done it, it's not a roller coaster ride. These energies, these entities are not circus clowns. They don't perform on command, you know, and so you really have to do your research. You have to understand what you're doing, get to know your equipment and learn how to interact with them, how to engage with them. Unlike some, I'm not going to mention any TV shows, so I won't even say the word <laughs> TV shows, where they're supposed to be professionals and they get activity going and then they scream like five-year-old little girls and run. You know, that's not the way to investigate. I'd be running to it, not away from it. <laughs> you know, but but just to to add to the point that you were saying, one of the terms I always use or one of the sayings is the moment you think you know it all in this field, it's time to go bowling. Yes. Because you never do. And you can learn from someone that's been there 20 years, someone that just started in the field. Yes. So, you know, there's, to me, there's no professionals in the field. Certainly no experts. None at all. No, there's, yeah. there's no, I don't believe no in the experts. word expert. Expert no, means you don't have anything else to learn. As he said, it was a, it's a continuous learning and growing process I've been doing it for 20 plus years. And as I told him before, <laughs> I know about this much <laughs> and, and that's about it. And, and I've already learned from, from PKC, I've learned some things from Ronnie and it's just a continual learning and growth. You cannot have an ego to be effective in this field. Um, notice I didn't say successful. <laughs> I want to work with effective teams. Right. Teams can successfully investigate, but they may not be very effective at it is our philosophy and so those who want to become effective and make a difference expand the knowledge base to further the field of paranormal studies that's that's what we're looking for and, and we and we in the paranormal field we need more teams like this we really need a lot of teams who are about paranormal unity who are about sharing information who are about like like they said we talked about this earlier about pushing our field forward instead of going backwards and everybody pointing each fingers at each other and being, we, we really need to move forward. Or we who, need can to, I, who can I step on to get to where I want yes. to go? Or, yeah. or I do it together. Or, or what TV show can I be on next? Right. It, it's not about that. It's about looking, it, it's about unifying and it's no. about all of us working together to come to a, hopefully an end result. Do you guys find that down the road in your future that you, and I don't even know if you do or not, you involve any psychic mediums in your in your hunts? I do. See, I we, do. We don't. But, we don't. But what I do in, in mine, because we are scientific based, my team's called Proof Paranormal Research Organization of Florida, besides me running and, and having the LLC for PKC. Um, I have a psychic medium on the team, but he loves it when I say this. I use my psychic medium. I just I use him. Uh, basically, all I do for him is I send him a picture, a, a few photos of the front of the house. He does his readings or he'll record it on a recorder. He'll, we'll seal it. He'll come and do the investigation with me. Then we'll review the evidence. Then I'll unzip his file or open his envelope, read it. And his name's Ben Hall. He's about 85 to 90% dead on. So he validates what we phys what, what we scientifically found. Mm -hmm. So now you're getting both realms, the, 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 the psychic side of it and the scientific side of it to validate each other, which is awesome. But in this, but I've noticed there's not a lot of people you can trust mm -hmm. yes. that yeah, are real yeah. as far as the psychic side. And, and as a building owner, it, it's really kind of frightening because we meet a lot of people. A lot of people come through the doors and they claim to be this or that or whatever. And um, there couldn't be more wrong. You yeah. know, we, my team, like I said, we have 35 on the team. We have three historians who spend a lot of time doing the historical, you know, value of the building. And we know a lot of stuff. Uh, and some people will come in and claim to know this, that, or whatever. And, you know, they couldn't be more wrong. But there is that psychic or there, that medium that walks in the door that you're like, wow that you're like we didn't tell any information to them and they're spot on 
but they're far few in between. And, and, and that's one of the things that I think, that's one of the things that's really scary about our field is, is that I think that like a football player, they've got stats, a baseball player has stats. You can quantify somebody's ability in anything but this field. Because if somebody walks in the door and says they're a psychic or a medium or an empath, how do you judge how accurate they are? Right. There isn't. So you just <laughs> got to kind of take say. their word. <laughs> and you kind of look at them like, okay, well, the nice thing about owning a building is three years in, we've got that history. We've got some of that research down. Some of them we can look at and go, yeah, okay. Some of them you look at and you, your mouth drops and you go, holy cow. You either talk to the historian that we did, or you're really accurate. Or you researched it yourself. Right. And, and, and it's really hard to do. And I think that the teams like this team that doesn't use one, I think has a tendency to be more, more apt to getting real hard evidence than a group that uses or relies on somebody who may have an ability that they're claiming because that team is relying on that ability from that one person where these guys are doing it more on a scientific level. So their information that they're getting is kind of blind and they're going into a building and they're realizing that we're learning this stuff based off of the scientific stuff we're getting, not based off of somebody walking in the building and go, well, somebody died in this room or somebody right. died over there. You're, you're, you're yeah, you're yeah. getting, yeah. We've had hundreds of people <laughs> die. <laughs> Um, but we do, we, we have a room in the building that we don't tell. It's kind of a test room. We, we know what happened in the building. We know what happened in that room specifically. There's a specific case that went on and I'm not going to tell anybody because it's kind of one of our testing rooms that we use when somebody comes in and says they have an ability. We'll take them into that room and just, awesome. we'll just say, it's what awesome. do you feel? What do you sense? Sometimes, tell, tell me a story. Tell, tell me what you're Sometimes they're a hundred percent straight on. Sometimes you're like, all right, dude, let's, I'll see you later. You just got <laughs> done watching that episode of, <laughs> yeah. of, of Destination Fair. Yeah. Um, but, but I mean, it is, and, and this is one of the fields that like, like I said, you've got to really pick and choose who you're going to associate yourself with and who you're going to be involved with because there's some really awesome groups out there and there's some really groups who want to be the next Zach Bagans. God, I mentioned his name. Or make money. Uh, or make money. Yeah. <laughs> you know, to, to uh, lightning, lightning bolts. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta exactly. hope the building doesn't collapse. And, you know, not, not, you know, they get some great evidence. You know, they do. You got to give credit where credit is due. Um, you know, all the TV shows, of course, they're edited to show you the evidence and it really helps to further the field. You know, and that's amazing. Of course, a little bit elaborated for television because people for don't talk about purposes yeah. only. People don't talk about the two hours you sat there and there was no activity, but you didn't realize when you caught that shadow figure on your IR cam, or you had three voices come through your electronic voice recorder that no one heard. You know that's the part they don't show on television. However, speaking to the uh, the psychic, the medium, even though we don't use it we would be hypocrites to condemn anyone who does. Because who, would, who are we to say there's no such thing after everything I've seen and experienced? I would be a hypocrite to say that. Right. You know, it's just choosing a different path. And I think that's one of the things that's going to help these teams collaborate mm -hmm. in the future is taking those vastly different approaches and accepting that is perfectly okay that you do things that we don't and we do things that you don't and that's how you learn and grow. And so for, for anyone else out there who is on a team, I don't think it's right to condemn any other team. I think the only condemnation I throw out is um, being aggressive. Um, no provoking. Antagonizing, no provoking. Right. Right. Again, <laughs> that, that's just disrespectful. You're not gonna get the same amount of evidence if you went in respectfully, right? And so to say that, now one thing we do have on the team is we have what we call sensitives. We look at sensitives as it's no different than someone having allergies. It's just some people are more sensitive to the energies than other people. It's kind of a natural feeling, but we're never going to condemn teams for using a psychic or a medium there again, because uh, there are, are times when it is proven 100% spot on 
and and to repeat myself we're not hypocritical you know that there's no judgment of other teams if it furthers the field and it can be backed up validated through evidence hey we have no problem with it and i think that's the important thing too is picking out a psychic who is who is spot on and who is a psychic and, and definitely if you can use that ability obviously we all want to do that but i think there's a lot of people who claim in the industry that they are something that they're not mm -hmm. and that's that's the problem with the industry is is that's where we we get that bad kind of reputation of people thinking that oh but there are I, I, and i had an experience with a psychic i had a little problem in my house uh, there was a psychic out of milwaukee she doesn't want me to tell anybody her name but i dealt with her i was on the phone with her and i never met the woman she didn't know who i was she didn't know i had children and she was actually telling me the layout of my house. She actually told me where the spirit likes to hide in my house. She told me it was behind a fish tank in my loft. She had no idea I had a fish tank in my loft. Or you had a loft. Or I had a loft, yeah. or any of that. <laughs> or fish, and, and, and she was probably the first psychic that I ever really looked or, or talked to on the phone. I was like, wow. And, and they're out there. And there's really awesome ones out there. But I think there's also people out there who they want to make a name for themselves. They want to, they want to make a name for themselves. And and, and the thing yeah. is, is I'm gonna money, charge you. I'm gonna charge our, our money. you. And this woman was just fantastic. And it, and and we did. We had a problem with my youngest daughter. She wasn't sleeping at night. We have a spirit in my house named Sally. Sally was hiding behind the fish tank. She knew about it. She told us all about it. We worked with the psychic to help kind of ease Sally. And it, we haven't, it's been awesome ever since. I'm in touch with her occasionally, um, but she was the first psychic that actually made me really believe in the psychic ability. Because like I said, I've never met her. The only thing I did was talk to her on her phone. And the thing that was really new, neat is that we knew who the site, we knew who the spirit was that was in my house. We knew her by name. We did the research. We knew how she died. This woman hit everything exactly. And all I did was refer to her from a gentleman who owns Willow Farms up in Rockford, Illinois. He okay. was, he was, and you know, you know who I'm talking about, Greg. Yeah. He was the one who referred me to her. I called her on the phone. I'm like, and she was spot on. And I was like, I remember sitting in my kitchen talking to her on the phone, going, "Whoa." And there are teams that utilize them, and and I think, like I said, there are some really amazing people out there. But I think there's some people who want to be part of something bigger. So they kind of exaggerate some of their abilities. And that's the part that really kind of, I think, becomes a little scary. Mm -hmm. the, whole, the whole concept of the team. And if you go back, to, I don't know, you guys, probably half of you guys were in the military or whatever, that you always had your dogs up front and they were always digging and it all came down to the nitty gritty. And those were the ones that would give you a little more of an insight of what you're getting your butt into. <clears throat> and, you know, I find it real interesting because that's where we are at with the one group up here where we do have them. And we have some great, we have two great ones. And one of them's out of Madison, that's Scotty Rourke. Mm -hmm. And he's just, he's just phenomenal. And the other, and Sharon from the group, Sharon Moritz, she's, she's really good. I mean, if I, if I, if I want to be able to go ahead and say that somebody's got my back, those are the people that have your back. So you don't have to worry about getting in those situations where you're going to be in too far and you can't get your butt out because that happens, that yes. happens. I think that's another thing that, that you're alluding to right there. That's a great point. Um, for, for those just starting out, I would go seek the advice of those who have been there and done that. Um, don't just go in there because of what you saw on television. You know, do your research, check with those who have had experiences, learn what to do and what not to do. Because otherwise, you're going to cause more harm than good. Yes. And then it's going to make it worse for that household or that family or that business. And then then one of us has to get called in to then help out. 
-hmm. So why not learn it the right way to begin with instead of just getting thinking two kids with two yeah, cameras quickly. thinking they know what they're going to do and they can't even use it properly. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Key, you need to know what you're doing to to, to help people. Don't the whole them. idea of there, of there being groups that don't understand the concept of why we're going we go into a situation and that's to help them. Yes primarily and they don't even know what that word means and that's a shame you know yeah. and, and that's, that's the thing that screws it up for everybody the field and sets yeah. us back when we're right. trying to move forward right yes and they all have stories to tell i mean we're in a hospital full of stories i mean we're full of life and death and accidents and and, and this building hundreds of people have lost their lives here and all of them are reaching out to people like him and him and and their groups wanting to tell their story. And, and a lot of them are confused and a lot of them don't know what's going on. And these are the teams that come in and like listen to them and communicate with them and make them feel at ease. And, and there are teams out there that are just phenomenal at doing that. And like I said, there's teams out here who are just in it for the thrill. They're in it for, I don't even know what they're in it for, but there's some really great teams out there that come and they listen and they have those experiences. And, and when they come in contact with Dr. Taylor or some of the, the, the people that are in these walls, that's all they want is they want to be heard. They want their stories to be told. They want their, 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 their past to be recognized. And, and, you know, unfortunately we bought a hospital or I purchased a hospital that had a lot of really bad rumors said about it, you know, and, and I'm not going to go into those, but it's teams like this that come in and they set the record straight because our spirits are walking these walls or halls and they're telling how great this hospital really was. But unfortunately, bad things sell and the old owners and the old management were walking around saying some really horrendous things about the building. And as the owner, I'm here to say, you know what, this was, I see that too down the hallway. Mm -hmm. You saw that? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So we're, we're actually we in one of the hallways and we all physically saw a shadow a figure shadow walk right down the hallway. Right hall. so, <laughs> um, but, and it's probably listening, but you know, one of the things that in the hospital, like we said, is we hear so many stories of death and life and birth and, and they're reaching out and they're trying to tell their stories. And, and at the end of the night, when the groups like this have a great experience, we're all looking down the hallway now. We're not even paying attention to you, Greg. Um, when, when one of our I would be too. <laughs> when one of our spirits reach out and they and they communicate with a group like this, or them, or even me or my or volunteers, we listen and we pay attention and we try to figure out what's going on with that that person that's in our building because we don't know what they're trying to communicate with us, and that's one of the things that we as a group as a community. Are trying to figure out right. and, and trying to figure out why they're reaching out to us and why their stories are being told like dr taylor we believe still walks the halls of the hospital he was one of the founding fathers of the hospital he's got a lot to tell and um he's on evps he does a lot of re really unique things in the building and, and it's it's just fascinating and it's one of the reasons why when he's here i don't want to leave sometimes i'm here for days on end trying to get him to communicate interact with us because we want to take the pride that he had in the hospital and pass it on to future generations and and to groups like this and say oh dr taylor you know he spent 16 hours a day here you know serving marion county and he's still here even after death still serving marion county and that's what's really really unique and really cool about you know a building like this and taking that information and combining it with his with their team story and our team story gets the picture of what he's trying to tell. And one thing I've noticed about this hospital, even is, is the stories, there is nothing negative or there's no devils no, here. No, no, there's no, no evil here. I got scratched. Okay, well, if the people don't know you got scratched because that's the only way they could communicate with you to say, hello, I'm here. Or we found there's too that- There's no evil here. We I, found too negative. that when we have, this is gonna sound, when we have paranormal investigators in the building that are doing the wrong thing, mm -hmm. our spirits have actually reached out to us and said, hey, stop. Stop it. And they've, <laughs> been, aggressive towards, they've been aggressive towards some people who have been in the building. Because remember, this building has been here for since 1959. It's been really, really the heart and soul of Marion County for a very long time. And when you have a group come in here who wants to 
be nasty about a building, our spirits and the people who have put their blood, sweat, and tears in here are like, whoa, wait a minute, yeah. wait a minute here. And, and like a good example, we're painting the outside of the building today. And when we're at, we were in Shadow Hallway, we're painting the outside of the building. We heard voices as we're painting. And almost the voices are like, oh, look, they're like taking care of the building. Something that hasn't been done in this building for a very long time. You know, and we're working so hard to try and make the building pretty again and trying to make it look, I see it too. Okay, that's, that's yeah, a person. Yeah, someone's coming, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm gonna climb through this screen any minute now. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's we, we just, someone just came walking down because we all saw the, the little light blank out. But what we saw earlier and y'all, Tell me if you saw the same thing move from my right yep. to the to left, left, right to left, yeah, yeah. across. And it, it was much bigger than the lady who just walked down from the end of the hallway. So I'm still listening, but I'm, I'm visually down here. Paranormal investigator. <laughs> We're still seeing things that paid attention. Okay? That's why that's why you're here tonight, right? What I and you, Greg, exactly. left hand down the hallway. Exactly. Right. But I, I think the spirits and I think the community is really, really. You know, my team and everybody that comes in, I mean, these guys have noticed such a, a, a vast change in what we've done in the hospital. Yes. And I think the, and spirits, the atmospheres, the spirits are different. very appreciative. Somebody actually bought the building who cares about the building. It's not about money. It's about saving the building. It's about allowing his children to be paranormal investigators in a building that's been here since 1959 and allowing people to keep sharing their stories. And that's what it's all about. And I think a lot of the spirits recognize that. And, you know, all of my volunteers put so much time and energy into the building. We care so much about the place. And I think that's why as time goes by, the building's becoming more and more active. Mm -hmm. I, I really, really, it is. I mean, I've been here for nine years. And in the last maybe two years, this building has been off the hook. I mean, anything from day tours to night tours to, it's been crazy active. And I think that is a lot of the spirits just saying, hey, check it out. They're doing what's right for the building. And, and they're all coming, they're bringing their friends with them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. They're like, it's safe here. It's a safe. It's like a, it's a, it's like a party atmosphere and they, yeah. they know they're being respected. Yes. Right. Yes. And we've Which met, is... like I said, we've met some incredible teams over the years. I mean, some of the teams that just come in are just, I mean, the people we had in this afternoon, the people, these guys, the people we had last weekend, there is just some really, really incredible teams out there that, that really, that care about what they're doing. They care about the scientific approach. They care about just everything that's going on. And, and it's neat because I sit on the front porch and I look at the building and I talk to people like this and, and it just makes me feel so good about what my team and I are doing to preserve something like this so that, like I said, so my children, his children, his children can come in and be like, oh, wow, this is where my daddy met Dr. Taylor or, and it's just really, really a neat environment. They, that way, everybody understands that as far as the difference between life and death, we all, we've all been there. We know exactly what's going on. We respect it. We understand it. And it, it's, it's something that a lot of those other people never comprehend. And that, that's what really ruins it for a lot of people because if you go into it that way, you know, you're doing it, you're doing it the right way. Right. You know? Well, and, and you know, it, it's really funny because I own a couple of other businesses. I bought the hospital three years ago. My accountant has been my accountant for 20 plus years. And so I told him I bought the building. He says, what are you doing that for? So I told him, he says, yeah, whatever. I said, really? He says, I don't believe in that stuff. I said, dude, take a ride down. Spend some time with a guy like this or a guy like that or her or anybody. I said, we'll see what you believe in after you leave the building. He says, oh, it's just, it's, you're just after money or after this. And then he saw my books last year. He says, oh, you're not doing this for money. I said, no, I'm really not. I'm doing it because it's something I truly believe in. And to have a group like this or anybody come in, and like I said, to verify some of the things that I have seen in the building, it's just amazing. And by the way, my accountant's coming down in December. So, but, and, 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 and to add a point to that, it's the money that comes in from us. 
that dumps right back into this place. He doesn't do it for, he doesn't make money on it. Oh, he, no. He's, there's so much upkeep here that he needs teams to come and learn and, and learn from here. And then we you donate know? to groups like PKC, right. which and he's helped he us. really needs to yes. explain what his group does too, because we kind of haven't really talked about PKC. Um, but we do a lot of donation. Tomorrow we're doing trunk or treat. Uh, my group of individuals who, who are in the volunteers, I think to, right now we have over 30,000 pieces of candy that we have all purchased. I have a whole suitcase. He's candy. got a whole we suitcase. Brought, we brought from Florida. So to, we, when I bought the hospital, one of the things I promised was is that we give back to the community. You know, we, we are a big part of South Pittsburgh community. Um, South Pittsburgh actually canceled their event and we're taking it over for them. Um, so like I said, we're giving back to the community. The amount of money that we spend, and I say we collectively because my volunteers decorated the whole front of the building. Um, it's just absolutely amazing what we're doing for the building and for the children of the area and all the other yeah. stuff. Tomorrow we're doing trunk, trunk or treat. We're giving out prizes. We're doing wheelchair races. <laughs> PKC's involved. We brought two wheelchairs from Florida because we wanted to kick their butt. Just saying. <laughs> they grease the wheels, but don't don't say it out loud. <laughs> See, the cards are stacked against OSPH. They've been slightly modified. <laughs> but but see, that's the kind of friendships that, that this place brings. We, we brought stuff from Florida that he needed here. It's like, what, you can't find a, a wheelchair in Tennessee or in a hospital for crying out loud. Hey, I've got, I've got a few. I don't want to interrupt you, but I've got a few names of people that are saying hello. And it's Donna Sharon. Nick Sarlo is. Hey, Nick. I know Nick. Nick's a good guy. Hey, Nick. John, John Nada and Danny Botts. Hey, guys. But if I don't know if they're going to ask any questions, but they can ask them. If you got any questions, get them in so we can go ahead and confront these people with them. Oh, confront. All right. Now he's going to be aggressive with us. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> But now we're it, now we're back to you again because I interrupted you and I'm sorry. Oh no, sir, you're you're fine. Oh. Never, never, never an interruption. Um, I will say to to kind of feed off what Ronnie says because I think what he and his team do is just amazing, especially considering that I have lost both my parents to cancer, um, and another loved one to cancer. So I, I think it. it I would be remiss if I didn't shut up and let him talk about right. what he and his team do, because it's it's amazing in, in, in what they do. So please talk a little bit about. Okay, I'll make it pretty quick. Um, There's never a quick moment with Chris, guys. <laughs> you had to shut me never. up last time. You got me so, started. So can we run into the next hour, Greg? We we don't even. I'm not even worried about it. <laughs> basically, basically, it's paranormal kicks cancer. You can find us on Facebook. We're actually. Um, Alex is helping me get ready. She's uh, my marketing coordinator now. Um, that's Alex there. That's Alex Hi. right there. Hi, Alex. We're about to we're about to set up a full website that's got my team plus PKC. But PKC basically what we do is we take my two loves, which is paranormal and helping children. Um, it, it started through Base Camp Children's Cancer Foundation out of based out of Orlando. We got the 501c3 backing. And what we do is we set up paranormal events, um, bring in speakers that are willing to come. And instead of say, I need $3,500 to come speak, that really have a passion to help people, help kids. Um, and then they'll come, they'll speak. We'll do raffle prizes um, and then investigations. And then the money raised, 75 to 80%, we donate directly to the kids themselves and grant their second wishes. But besides that, we keep the families with them. So gas cards to the mom and dads for travel. People don't think about the family as right. much as they do. It's still, the, we're, we're, our, our key point is the children, but the children do much better when they're not alone. <laughs> so the kids need to know they're not alone. Right. So we will give gas cards, food cards, hotel rooms, whatever we can to help the family stay with the, the children at this time, you know, the, this hard time for them, you know, it, right. it's, it's sad. Um, and then, so it was just based out of Orlando. And then three years ago, my dad passed away of cancer, um, retired Marine, a cop for 25 years. All he did was give the community never sick a day in his life. 
boom, three months later when we found out he had it gone. Yes. And then I said, you know what? I said, I said, I need to do more than just Florida. So then we hooked up with the American Childhood Cancer Organization, which is the ACCO, which is the largest in the nation. And now I'm nationwide. So we go here, Ronnie has been such, such, he gave us a poster on the wall, that's your wall. Anytime you want events, you come and do it. He's donated numerous times, you know, anything I need. Um, and there's other locations. We do the Jasper Jail that, that lets us do that wow. um, as well, which Rose, is based out of Florida. Rosemont, Rosemont 2021. Um, we're doing the event in Rosemont 2021. Um, but um, so now at the eight, now we took Paranormal Kicks Cancer and I've added another LLC to it. So now it's Paranormal with a Purpose. So now that we're nationwide, I changed it to Paranormal with a Purpose Presents a Paranormal Kicks Cancer event. Or now we can help battered women. We can help wounded vets. We can now we've I've branched it out to help whoever we can in the community or their families or family members that need help. And they just need to reach out. They go to paranormalkickcancer.llc on Facebook right now until the, the website's up and running. Anyone that needs help, let sure. us know. And uh, we will reach out and see what we can do to help. We're going to be in um, Virginia on Valentine's Day to help a 10 year old child at um, what is it? Uh, cabin on cabin three. What is it? Yeah, it's 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 in mechanic. It's in Mechanicsville, Virginia. It's cabin 360 and it's on um, it's the whole weekend and we've already confirmed the Southern Gypsies. Um, it's going to be a huge event. So oh. and then and then we're doing where are we going from there? Um, uh, well, we have uh, we have the one in Oklahoma uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that we're supporting Isabella's family. Unfortunately, Isabella just, just she passed she just away, passed away on us uh, about three weeks. So ago. we're making it a celebration so of we're, life we're celebrating to get the life. money for the family to yeah. help them. Um, yes, it's and then I don't know we're we're getting Rosemont in September. Rosemont, we're we're pretty much booked every single month starting in January. So, but if anyone anyone listening or anyone you know. All they gotta do is reach out to Facebook and say this is going on with the family, you know, and uh, and we're gonna help how we can. But it all started through Paranormal Kicks Cancer, basically helping these kids. Um, yeah, you share share the links, and Kelly, I think she's on here somewhere, and Kelly, you go ahead and post them on our pages and get up on ours and take just it from there. Alex, Alex will get the messages and whatever we can do to help you guys. Anything. You know, we're involved with with uh, lost limbs too. Right, they're awesome yes. too. Now, your group is from Florida. Yeah. You know, do you know the group that's ESP? Yes, yeah. Terry. Terry. Yeah, I, I've known them for years. Um, okay. Off of just me, real quick, just Gary behind me. Um, Hi, Gary. With War Party Paranormal out of Florida. But he's been been, on show. and, and show he's already. been uh, with PKC, a sponsor. He comes and helps do everything for years. I just wanted he's behind me, so you know. Nice to meet you. And he came with us from Florida. He's never been at the hospital. This is his first time. Yeah. So we're about to pop his cherry. So you know <laughs> what I'm saying? It's all good. <laughs> did they did they tell you that you had to keep your hands and feet inside the vehicle at all times? <laughs> <laughs> You know, sit, sitting here listening to that again. First, I want to I want to commend him and his team for what they do. Um, you know, there's no greater cause than helping kids. Right. So that's a soft spot for both Todd and myself. We've um, he was actually my martial arts instructor, and then uh, I helped him when we were teaching you know self defense courses, and he asked me to work with some of the kids and things like that. But in a lot of different other areas, Ninja. what's um. What's interesting again, he and I have met for the first time tonight. Yep. My father was a Marine, <laughs> fought in Vietnam, died 25 years ago from cancer, and he was a detective for 27 oh, years. Wow. No wow. way. No way. I mean, this is what I, I do for a living. This is what I'm a detective? I'm a police officer. Todd is, yeah. that, is a police wow. officer. See this? My father is oh, a police officer. <laughs> okay. Yeah. See that? I always yes. support officers no matter what. I, I, no matter Todd, what's going on in society, yeah. without them, we're in trouble. Yeah, my father actually uh, trained Todd yes. when, when he was a rookie. 
Wow. Uh, it's uh, it's just now per, again. This is just a personal thing. I don't believe in coincidence. No. I think everything happens for a reason. And for two people to meet tonight with very similar stories mm -hmm. about our fathers, almost exact mirror mm -hmm. image, is is phenomenal. I mean, that's it's how relationships. Yeah, that's friendships. That's relationships. But. He That's knows. the OSPH connection. Yes. <laughs> and, and none of one this would have happened without Ronnie. <laughs> it's, another, it's another one of those synchronicities. Yeah. 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 And it's, you never really know what the power of this building has. I mean, because you did, you brought two people together who would have never met themselves or met each other if it would have met I'm themselves. I'm still trying to meet myself. <laughs> if it wasn't for them being at the same place at the same time. And what's the chances of me knowing? of him knowing terry yeah right. yeah and i know terry for years she used to come to the pia that we did pia gatherings so you know tracy too yeah her um and then you have um oh i can't remember her name now uh and her husband earl earl and um um earl and uh, oh gosh oh man what, oh. <laughs> but anyway they were on esp too and then they split that's yeah. and now they're getting back together that's called old age yeah old. we're getting old <laughs> but yes i've known them all <laughs> and then and then when when poor doc passed away that was yeah tragic was but doc was awesome yeah. the, the whole team is awesome i even i even knew doc i knew doc from chicago no tracy and um yeah and that they were together earl earl's her husband yeah. i can't I can't even remember her name. We met in that yeah. I, I, I have it. I have it because uh, it's like five letters. Is it like multi? I don't even know. Yeah. But it's. I feel so bad because I'm a friend of hers. Oh. <laughs> she going to slap me when I see her. Not now. Anymore. He had a brain fart. <laughs> that's, Old age, that's, that, that's the gray greg when you get when you get a little older it happens a lot more but is anybody i don't think i've got julie omera webster mentioned us in a comment it's uh, GR, uh carlos daniel samaji says thanks for the meeting Interesting, all your points of view and analysis. Greetings from Bogota. Oh, Bogota? Paranor Exped Expedente Paranormal Colombia. The death is just be just the beginning. Ooh. So that's all the way from there. Wow. So you're, you're like you're like like international. Yeah, uh, you know, it, what's what, what's really neat, you know, and what really makes it is that no matter where we're from, we all have a connection. Yeah. And, you know, you know, some of the people that we've known, you know, that have passed are still with us today anyway. You know, a lot of other people don't even look at that that way. You know, I know. You know, I've been I've been doing quite a bit of how could I say classes on that end of it when it comes to that's why I brought up the the points about psychic mediums because I'm doing that I've done remote viewing things like that to try to enhance myself when it goes into an investigation. And it's, well, it's we, we all have the gifts. We just got to learn how to use them. Right. The whole thing. So That's it's a nutshell. Choose not to. From from a scientific standpoint, you know, uh, from the sensitivity aspect of it, one of the things we do when we're teaching people about that, especially kids, you know, when, when uh, if we get a case called and there's children involved, of course, that moves up to the top of our ladder, which right. is for all teams. So to make a, again, a very long detailed explanation short, um, the way we explain it is if you're ever in Walmart, anywhere, you know, and you're checking out and that person comes up behind you, you're not talking, you're not even acknowledging their existence, but your spider sense goes off. 
there's just something about them that makes you feel uncomfortable without any interaction. That's that electromagnetic field, that energy right. that you put out. I tell people all the time, you know, the hippies in the 60s were actually right. There is a vibe, a quan, an essence, an energy to every person. And if you tune into it, you can sense it. You can sense the true intention and, and, and how a, a true a person is. It wasn't all about the green. Well, I was going to. No, it wasn't all about the green. That came. <laughs> Before before it was even mentioned, I was going to wear a different hat tonight, and I have my Vietnam veteran hat that I was going to wear that I pushed to the side, and I don't know why, mm -hmm. but then all this starts to happen, and it's all the same thing. It's it's just the camaraderie. It's it's you know this is the the same group, you know it's it's great. Danny Bach says, I like what Ron says about the place getting more active. He must be doing something right. So keep up the good work. And I know Greg believes in what Ron is doing there. That's it in a nutshell. Well, you, know, and, you can't you can't frame it any better than that. And I'll, and I'll tell you what, it's groups like this who have been coming here before I own the building. Uh, who have a very unbiased opinion of the building, um, who, who, like I said, we talked in the parking lot and, and I try to ask groups like, oh, when's the last time you've been here? What do you, and, and he just looked at me and said, wow. And, and it's, and that to me, that's what make that's what tugs at my heartstrings is, is when somebody like, like this gentleman and his group come in and they recognize the hard work and the caring that right. we put into the building to me, that's worth more than any money in the whole wide world or anything like that. That's what I thrive off of. When somebody gives us the compliment of how hard we've worked and how far we've come in the last couple of years, you know, I, I do. I sit in the car and a little tear kind of goes down my, you know, down my cheek because yeah. I wear my heart on my sleeve when it comes to this building. This building means so much to me. Um, and to have a group like this who's a bunch of seasoned veterans who come in and they're like, wow, you guys are really moving forward. You know, that is really what this is all about to me. Right. You know, the spirits aside are really cool and, and all the other stuff, but really the building is what just, it, it, like I said, it just, it, it's my pride and joy. There is no place I'd rather be than in the walls of this building, you know, whether it's scrubbing down a floor or fixing a leak or whatever. And for a group like this to come in and go, wow, I noticed that last time we were here, you know, we, you were here and now we're here three months later and you're here. That is, that to me, that is worth more money and the more money than the, you know, the world has to offer. It, it's, it, it, it's, it's really what makes me tick. And I go back to my team and I'm like, they were here. And they're like, they noticed what we did. They noticed the decorations we put outside. They noticed the painting. They noticed that's what makes us all tick. And that to me, is just worth more than gold. I mean, it's just, it's just awesome. And, and being a part of the city and being a part of this industry and being able to do it right is what really, really drives us and what really makes me proud. And like I said, like, you, you know, when, when I'm able to pat somebody on the back and say, good job, we did good. You know, we had a fire inspection today, which we passed. We brought the building up to code. You know, those are the things that, yeah, those are the things that like, you know, wow. I have to shut you down in a heartbeat. Yeah, in a exactly. heartbeat, you're the, done. The fire marshal, I, I was impressed because she looked at me and, and I'm not lying. You can ask any of the volunteers that were here today. I was, I didn't sleep at all last night. She comes in, she goes, you really got everything done? I said, we worked our butts off. She walked through the building and she says, you know, everybody at the fire marshal's office said there was no way. She says, wow. And I said, this is 35 people sweating, yelling at each other, screaming, cutting fingers, getting bloody, but working to the point where we were ready. And she called me because our deadline was, the, was actually the 26th, I believe. And I had submitted the, the actual um, paperwork to her on that morning. And she says, you know, I was just about ready to call you. And I said, why is that? She said, because today's your deadline. And I said, well, Desiree, I didn't want to submit it until it was done. I said, I didn't want to waste your time. I didn't want to waste my time. 
I said, we worked the last month getting what you wanted done done. And I said, I want you to come out and I want you to be proud of what we accomplished. She walked through the building and she says, you know, everybody at, at the fire, the, the, the fire protection management office was like, there's no way. We all worked hard. We all got it up to code. We worked our butts off to get stuff done. And we sat in the parking lot for an hour and a half talking about how she had so much respect for us and the team and how much we cared about the building. And it's those little things that really, really make me feel just really good inside. It's just amazing. And we got somebody putting their arms up, which means we probably got some great evidence. <laughs> but I, and, and just to, for Ronnie, again, we were here a month ago, the day that they happened to get a call that the, the fire department came and said, this is wrong, this is, if you don't get this done, they only had a month to get it done. And Ronnie was running around like almost in tears, like, how am I gonna do this? And we did. And that team, that 35 people were nonstop, no questions asked, what do we gotta do to get it done? And we did. And he had a plan before we left that weekend and here it's implemented, it's done, they're happy. No one's taken this place from Ronnie ever because the help that he's gotten, the support system. Well, and, and, and it's neat because we sat down and, and as a team, you know, I said, this has got to be done. And everybody put their 10 cents in. Everybody was like, this is what we need to do. We had a couple of individuals come up with some really great ideas on how we can get it done, how we can get it done efficiently. And, and we did it. And, and this is, you know, like their team, like their team that's what makes this building tick. That's what makes this building amazing is, is that when, when I'm down, when something's going bad or when we need to fix something, I've got 34 other people to like kind of lean on and help me out and get what we need to get done. I think they're getting antsy. They want to go investigate. <laughs> he, he, I'm edging towards the end of his seat. I um, was just going to say, you're going to get- We're taking time away from their investigation. No, I, I will say that, that, that this, this guy here, uh, that I'm calling a new friend of mine from just talking with him and making that connection with him tonight. I will, I am a very, those who know me know that I'm a very honest person. I tend to take the approach with people that now, now hear, hear this whole sentence before you judge me. I don't care if someone likes me, but I do put a lot of weight on if they trust me. Right. Because I think trust breeds likeness, then you can, you can work with somebody. There's not very many people that I would meet and three hours later stop in the middle of an investigation while my team is still out investigating right now to come and do this. And we have been asked to do similar things. And I'm like, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that later. We're, we're, we're doing this right now. But when he asked, there was no hesitation. And I think that's a testament to who this guy is. Right energy that he's put into this, the team that he has, and, and there again, just a, an opportunity to build that camaraderie. Um, am I getting antsy? Sure. This is what we do. We investigate. But I'm getting updates from Todd, who's going back and forth and checking with the team and keeping me posted. So, uh, and he'll be back again. So he's, cool. oh yeah, we'll be back again for sure. Not a big deal. Probably more so now <laughs> than what he's been. Right. Well, I have to be careful, though. He'll put me to work. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of law to be about. <laughs> nothing, nothing wrong with that. Not at all. Not, a, not at all. It's getting to the point. It's an hour and 30 minutes, gentlemen. Oh, my. So it's up to you. Well, I, you guys I need to investigate. And yeah. I need to get ready because we've got a big, a big day tomorrow. tomorrow. I'll be here tomorrow about 8 o'clock in the morning. Wow. And then we got a public investigation. So we're not done till three o'clock in the morning. Then we got to clean sleep. up. So I've got to get my then butt we'll to all the night cabin tomorrow. and get some sleep. But uh, yes. Greg, anytime you want us on, you know, give us a call. I know. I enjoy I know. being on your show. And thank I enjoy you for having us. Introducing new friends yeah. and new groups. And so you yeah. guys, you guys are really awesome. Uh, it's a pleasure meeting every one of you. And here's the best for the rest of the year and in the next. And hopefully, one day I'll meet you guys there. Definitely. And you know, Greg, you and your team are welcome up here anytime. You know, I'm here every other week. So get your butt in my car and let's make a trip up here. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. And, and 
Number one, thank you for your service. Oh, well, thank you. Definitely. Thank you. Took me a long time to go ahead and be able to say that. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. You guys have a great evening. Yes, and sir. Come up with a whole bunch of great evidence. As long as I've got the links for you guys. And if something falls short, I'll get it from Ron. Yeah, he, he's got our information. Feel free to email or, or text or call me directly and we'll get you what you need. Okay. You guys all have a great night. Yes, sir. Thank Thank you. It's a pleasure. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>